love having an honest conversation. I think one of the biggest challenges that we encountered when we first started to co-teach was our personalities. I tend to take over and you know be very global and here's how we're going to do it you know because I see the whole picture and Lisa is very detailed and so many times um, I think I would not fulfill the detail oriented you know that you are and then so you come in and interrupt me and then I would get like all flustered and I'd get really upset um, and then you sometimes would get upset with me if I didn't acknowledge some of your ideas and so having those tough conversations helped us grow. Yeah and I think I think it really came out of the intense moments that we had that we actually became better mm -hmm. in our practice together and how we used language with each other. Um, not accusatory, you know, trying to oh, always acknowledge and paraphrase. I think the paraphrase was a huge part of our, our ability to actually start communicating so that we build understanding together. And so I think one particular instance where um, we had a moment together where I was, I was livid and it came out one day in the office when we were trying to plan together mm -hmm. and I just you just kept pushing your ideas and shooting me down and it wasn't until we had that moment that we were actually able to able to grow mm -hmm. and the planning works better and I definitely teaching. see our teaching is better and more cohesive and I, I know what your next step is. Yeah. And I think too, um, it was having pursuing positive intentions and uh, it, when Lisa was talking to me and telling me, you're doing this, you're doing this, and you know, this is how it's making me feel, not get defensive and just, yeah, accept that. Yeah, she's feeling this way mm -hmm. and I have that tendency. And so being more cognizant of that and just giving her the room to, um, you know, spend the time that she needs to be so detailed and respect that. So respect each other's differences yeah. that makes us such a strong team or yes. the team that we are. All right, so this was a very difficult conversation for them to have, and it was rehearsed since they already told us the story and then we got them on camera, but still, it was truly authentic in the sense of how they talk about changing their language. So I'd like us to change a few things about maybe the way you're gonna to talk to your colleagues when you go back to school. A couple of coaching tips, and I'm gonna ask my colleagues as well to jump in with some tips for building this kind of collaborative language. These are my favorites, we could start with that. So the first one is using noticing and wondering sentence stems. I noticed that you interrupted me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's not judgmental, it's an observation. So I noticed, I noticed that those three kids we're kind of sitting on the side and we couldn't pull them into the lesson today. So noticing is all things we notice, we're observing, we're hearing things. So noticing is less judgmental than why did you do that or how come. So starting the conversation with I notice and then continuing, I wonder if we. So rather than I wonder if you could stop doing that because it annoys you know, the heck out of me, instead of having that language, I wonder if we could agree on some of these before we go in front of the kids. So the noticing and wondering strategy, <coughs> when on a very rare occasions, mainly in New York because of travel restrictions, I'm asked to come into the classroom and coach and observe the outcome of a training like this. And it's so exciting to actually see. And when we finish with the observation, I use this as a feedback formula as well. And one other feedback formula I like to use is just shower each other with compliments. Do you get enough compliments on your team? Who gets enough compliments in this room? Now, like, we talked about this on the way here, that I, I need constant <laughs> praise. Like, that's just who I am. And I'm like, I was talking about love language. And I love language. Yeah, I love I need that. that. I need verbal affirmation. And like, if I don't, if I don't, you would not be a girl. <laughs> if I don't get that, I'm like, compliments a day too. Yes. Better earlier than later, 
Let, let's start with the compliments at seven o'clock. Compliments, guys. <laughs> but this is very interesting. If, if we could just go back to the previous risk taking. When am I going to take risks? If I feel that you're going to acknowledge that, or if I know that, oh, what if I make a mistake? What are you going to think of me? And I'm going to be less than. So how to create a safe environment? It's really all about that. So the compliment and the joking that we're doing is very serious joking, of course, because compliments is part of that. Risk-taking, reflection, assessment based on student data. So we can compliment each other on the student. So just for visual, come up here, please, for a moment. So if we are co-teachers, yeah, hi. It's all about the kids. So let's triangulate. So when we're complimenting each other, of course we can compliment. I really like that color on you. Or look, we, we kind of match. Yeah, we could do that, but we could also compliment each other on the work and the impact that we have on student learning and seek out opportunities. So thank you. But one thing that I always tell teachers, and you're going to take out your big erasers. Everybody take out your imaginary eraser and start erasing the word but, B-U-T. Okay, are you erasing with the erase until everybody's erasing? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Why are we erasing the word but? Exactly, you can't give a compliment and then continue with the word but. Because what will your partner remember? Only what comes after the but. <laughs> 